welcome back to Rough Draft DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a coat rack out of repurposed wood. I'll be using this pier post that I found in the wreckage after Hurricane Sandy. After the storm, I was able to salvage quite a bit of material, both wood and metal, on the beaches around New York City. And all three of my DIY YouTube videos give detailed step-by-step -step descriptions of how I've repurposed these found materials. My channel is about getting started in DIY even if you've never done things like stain wood or use a power drill. Now let's get started on the coat rack. I thought this post would make a good project if I could suspend it with rope since it already has a hole bored through the top. It was probably part of a pier and then broke off and washed up in the storm. It's a pretty unique piece, but you could also use a long plank of wood and drill a hole through the top with a paddle drill bit. The post was looking kind of bare, so I spruced it up with some wood stain and then coated it with gloss to protect and seal the surface of the wood. For you first time wood stainers, watch my first video, How to Make a Wine Rack, for detailed instructions on how to choose the right color of wood stain and how to apply it. I'll include the link below in this video's description. Before I hang the coat rack, I'm going to install the hooks evenly over the front of the post. There will be two columns of hooks that I've marked with string held down with painter's tape. The string ensures a straight line of hooks. You'll want to install the hooks towards the upper part of the post or board. If they're too low, you won't be able to hang a coat without it touching the floor. Evenly measure out and mark where you want the hooks to be placed. Then use the hooks to mark the spots for the screws. Use a slow drying ink pen or dry erase marker so you can easily erase any mistakes. I'm going to use a thin drill bit to pre-drill holes for the hook screws because they're quite short and I want to make sure they get a good grip in the wood. First I loosely install the hooks and after removing the string I tighten up the screws. Coat hooks are inexpensive and a wide variety of styles can be found at a hardware store or on eBay. If you're using a flat board of wood just install the hooks on either side like this. Since this hole was made for a strand of rope I decided that that's what I would use to suspend the coat rack. I used manila rope and tied it into a square knot. This is an easy knot that's good for tying two different ropes together or tying the ends of one rope together to make a loop. To make a square knot, take the rope in your left hand and place it under and over the rope in your right hand. Then take the rope that's now in your right hand and cross it over and around the rope in your left hand. You end up with the loose ends of the rope that I decided to cut down, tape the ends, and place back through the hole. This makes the loop and knot look a lot more sophisticated than it really is. Now for the installation. I'll be using these old used iron shelf brackets that I found on eBay. They really go well with the look of the rest of the project. And brackets also help distribute the weight of a suspended object along the side that is fastened to a wall so that the entire weight isn't pulling on one concentrated spot. If the object is too heavy and isn't mounted properly, it could fall and tear a hole in the wall on its way down. The foolproof way to install these brackets for the coat rack is to mount them on a stud in your wall. Sounds simple, but finding a stud behind your wall can be frustrating. I live in a pre-war building with plaster walls, so a lot of the conventional ways of finding a stud just don't work. If you give up on finding a stud, there is another trick to safely mounting your coat rack to the wall. You can use wall anchors that help screws hold more weight by acting as a kind of plug inside the wall. Different anchors are designed to hold different amounts of weight on different types of surfaces. The package should tell you how much they hold, what surface they're best for, and how to install them. Each one of these wall anchors holds 50 pounds. If you don't know how much your coat rack weighs, weigh yourself holding the rack on a bathroom scale, then weigh yourself empty-handed and take the difference. Believe it or not, my coat rack turned out to weigh only 11 pounds. The post is most likely made of pine, which is a very light wood and typically used for piers. So the wall anchors will provide plenty of support for my coat rack, plus the coats I hang on it. When deciding how high to install the top bracket, keep in mind you'll want the top hook to be around eye level, like with a traditional standing coat rack. Mark the top of the rope with a pencil, then add a few inches for the length of the fisherman's hook that we'll get to in just a bit. That higher mark will be for the top of the bracket. Using a level and using the bracket as a stencil, mark the holes for the screws. Then install the wall anchors and screw on the top bracket. We'll get to the bottom bracket later. I want the rope to hang from this rusty fisherman's hook that I found washed up on the beach. It goes well with the coat rack's nautical theme. You can buy used ones on eBay or find brand new ones at a hardware store. The only problem was I had to find a device that would connect the bracket to the hook. 
and whatever was going to do that had to be small enough to pass through the hole at the top of this bracket, yet strong enough to hold the weight of the entire coat rack. I looked at carabiners, D-rings, eye screws, and eye bolts. None of it seemed to fit the bill. As it turns out, a standard zip tie can hold up to 50 pounds of weight. A seven and a half inch zip tie. All that time spent searching in hardware stores, and there was a four cent solution already sitting in my toolbox. Clearly this red piece of plastic doesn't match the rest of the project, but it will if you paint it with metallic paint. Don't wanna buy paint? Buy black zip ties or use a Sharpie. Be sure not to paint over the end of the tape that will pass through the head. If it's coated too thickly, the paw won't catch on the teeth. Also, be sure to insert the tape on the correct side, the one that's flush with the tape. Once it's secured around the hook and through the bracket, cut off the loose end and cover the top part with a cap nut, also painted with metallic paint. Cap nuts run cheap, about 80 cents, and are found in the fun part of the hardware store, all the hundreds of tiny drawers with different types of screws, nails, nuts, and bolts. For less than 90 cents, you can create a sophisticated looking device that can hold 50 pounds of weight. Now I'm going to secure the bottom of the coat rack to the wall with the second bracket since I don't want it to swing free and possibly damage my wall. To get the bottom bracket aligned with the top one, tape one end of a piece of string to the center line of the top bracket and tie a roll of tape to the other end to weigh it down and keep the string taut. This should make a straight line down from the top bracket. Tape the bottom of the string to the wall and ensure it's straight up and down with a level. Line up the bottom bracket to the center of the string and gently align it to the bottom of the coat rack. Mark where to screw the bracket into the post and where to install it in the wall. Pre-drill a hole in the bottom of the post and pre-drill holes for the wall anchors. Then install the bottom bracket and attach it to the post. And there you have a finished coat rack made out of repurposed wood that's far more original and costs a lot less than a store-bought one. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. I have more DIY videos on the way.